Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend DG Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including The Quantum Zone, This, That, or the Third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. Hi, this is Dan Jurgens, and you are listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. Diggity dink. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Nightwing News. New, new news. I am Phil. Joining me, as always, it is. Hello, I'm Kristen. All right, tonight we got a bunch of new stuff. We got uh, some new Night Terror stuff. We got some new World's Finest stuff. Uh, that's that's the majority of the stuff. It either has World's Finest in the title somewhere or Night Terror somewhere. In the, oh, no, Tales of the Titans number one we also have. It's all new. It's all fresh. Well, some of it's last week, some of it's this week, but it's still newer. All right. It's new since the last time. That's right. Exactly. All right. So should we start with um, last week's books? Uh, Yeah, sure. That'd be um, World's Finest, right? Yeah. And also, yeah, like I said, I'll mention real quick. I don't know. You probably didn't read it, but uh, Night Terror's Robin came out number one. Uh, and like I said, it's ba- you know, like we were talking, I think, uh, last time. Uh, yeah, it's Tim and Jason basically stuck in their nightmares. And of course, you know, Jason, Jason's getting beat with a crowbar. And Tim's basically reliving the, the night his father was killed over and over. Well, that sounds delightful. Oh, well, yeah. And then, like I said, towards the end, eventually, it's like instead of his father getting killed, it's Bruce, Dick, and Stephanie getting killed. Oh, and Cass. So, yeah, again, just all the night terrors is basically they are all their nightmare scenarios as uh, this new villain Insomnia is going through looking for the nightmare stone. But <laughs> and it is Jason's ultimate nightmare because every time he like he basically guns down like a villain, this villain basically just like multiplies. So that's no good. Violence isn't helping. Yeah. So Jason's in a little bit of a uh, quandary at the end there. Although it's kind of weird because it's like this whole story. I don't know if it's just like a coloring thing or if they did that on purpose, but it's or I mean, Jason's got his mask on pretty much in the hood the whole time. But I'm like, is that supposed to be like his white streak in his hair? Because his hair look kind of looks like that the whole time. It's not black. It's not red. It almost looks blonde. Oh, I just say when you held it up to the computer, it kind of looked white. Yeah, that's what it looks like. It, yeah, it looks it looks like a white streak. So I don't know if that's supposed to be yeah. his white streak or. You would think. Yeah. Because that's all, that's really all the hair you see. But so, yeah, I mean, again, we're not going to get, I guess we're not going to get a ton of character development in these. But yeah, I mean, it's basically psychological profiles, I guess, where it's like, yeah, ah, this, yeah, the whole Tim thing is just that kind of depressing. It's weird because it's like his, his, his series already ended, but then, but you know, it's, it's kind of like him and, Jason are getting a one shot this week. Punchline got a one shot. Uh, so we're just throwing in like random ones, like uh, Satana had one last week. Uh, well, does Poison Ivy have her own? Yeah, you know what? That the Poison Ivy was so popular, I think it was only supposed to be like six issues, but they kept it going because I guess it was okay. selling. So it's like up around like issue 13 now. Okay, yeah. Uh, by uh, yeah, G. Willow Wilson is writing that uh, the the uh, creator of uh, Miss Marvel over at Marvel. Uh, oh, but also last week we got World's Finest Teen Titans number one by that same team who brings you uh, well, at least by Mark Wade who brings us uh, World's Finest Batman Superman every month, which we'll get, which we'll get to even though there wasn't a ton of dick in it. 
So, yeah. So, what did you think of this one? Because it's uh, set in the past, just like the uh, Batman Superman thing. Yeah. So overall, I thought it was good. I thought it was cute. Although I do not. This is so weird. I don't like how this person draws Dick's face. Oh yeah, it's kind of like long, like ang, like long, angular kind of. Yeah, I don't know. His chin looks so weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's just like on this page here. Yeah. I'm like, ugh. That's what I was looking at. I don't know if that's just like the artist like trying to make everyone look different. It makes him look too old. Mm hmm. That's as like a subtle way of uh, showing maturity. Um, so Aqualad and Wonder Girl being together is that kind of new? I mean, that hasn't because I know in past versions she's been with Roy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I don't in the like in the anything in the last like. 20 years or so. I don't remember her being with uh, I was going to say that isn't from like the original Silver Age stuff, is it? She she wasn't really dating Aqualad, was she? I don't think so. So that must be yeah, that must be uh, the liberty uh, Mark Wade is taking her. Which again, it's kind of weird because this is kind of like we did have Silver Age Titans but it's kind of uncharted territory now because like after all the crises and stuff you know, history's been rewritten so much it, you know it, Yeah, it's hard to know exactly but then oh i think i did i was uh, telling you about this uh, i saw the preview last week but what did you think about that whole thing where you know roy's basically just getting in dick's face and it's like everyone else here is cool here. their real name and you know who they are he's like but you not you and then you get the flashback to batman it's like don't trust them yeah um it's it felt it felt a little teen titans year old. i mean like it's fine it's just not that special anymore like we've been there done that yeah. So I wasn't surprised that it happened. It wasn't. Yeah, it just seems like business as usual at this point. Yeah. I did think it was interesting how Roy is streaming the stuff and Dick's getting mad about him for that. I thought that was very interesting. Yeah, that's the other thing where it's basically like, yeah, and they modernized it. So, yes, they do have, you know, like social media and stuff. Yeah. But I love how, like, everyone else is getting along with their mentors. Well, except for Roy, because uh, Oliver's not even around. But, uh, yeah, then Batman's just like, no, don't, don't, don't trust them. <laughs> They're not well trained. <laughs> And then we added in, uh, was it Bumblebee? Yep. Yes. I guess, I guess we have more than one girl on the team. That's right. Bumblebee is, um, I think she came around in the 70s. So I guess she's more like Bronze Age. Yeah, I think. Yeah, because, yeah. But Dick even makes the comment, Roy's like, you weren't even here when we started this. <laughs> but no, it's good. I, um, yeah, I was worried because it wasn't uh, the same penciler as uh, the Batman Superman one. But no, I, I, I like the art on this also. Although, again, like you say, Dick's face is kind of weird in some things. But again, I think that's the artist is trying to like make everyone look different because i mean there are artists who like they'll draw you know every male will look the same and the only way you can tell the difference is between like hair and clothes and stuff but yeah i, I don't know he just has too much chin i don't know yeah <laughs> but yeah it, it's interesting yeah it'll be interesting to see where it goes because yeah batman's given his friends he's like or his Stuff. I may be friends with them, but Flash is saying, you know, be careful. But then Aquaman's saying, especially around Robin, it, yeah, it's it's interesting because it seems as though the other mentors kind of don't trust Batman. 
either. Mm. So. Yeah. Maybe they can all grow together. Unless they're just like, oh, yeah. Is that their subtle way of saying, yeah, don't be uh, hurt if Robin doesn't share because he's probably not allowed to share? Yeah, I don't know. Mm. Oh, it's so funny. Uh, I forgot to mention this to you last week. It reminded me because uh, I saw the uh, ad for the uh, My Adventures with Superman new animated series that came out. The first oh. week, the first week I'm watching it, and like there's a character at the end who like I didn't even know it was supposed to be him, but but it's like everyone's younger, like Superman Lois, everyone's like younger. So there's like this young guy, younger like agent guy with like white hair. And I didn't even rec know who he's supposed to be until I looked at the credits. It's supposed to be like a young Slade Wilson, because he has like both eyes and stuff. Oh, interesting. Yeah, but he's like he's like some kind of agent, but the way he's dressed and like the way he was moving and even the weapons he was using, I'm like this just screams Agent 37 to me because, I mean, he was moving like dick. Well, maybe he's already meta or something. I don't know. Okay. Well, like I said, everyone's younger, so Dick's probably like a child still, but... Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so what did you... But yeah, I, sorry. I thought in this it was good that you see how Roy is kind of like, it kind of is a bummer that Ali's not... I mean, yeah, you definitely got an interesting look at all the mentors, so that was kind of cool. Huh. And the shadowy figure at the end who says he's building a better Teen Titans. So do you think part of why... Dick is saying, don't live stream in this and this kind of stuff is because Batman won't like it. Oh, yeah. I'm sure Batman doesn't want any photographic uh, evidence of Dick's face, you know, Dick's face, even with a mask on or any his presence at all. And again, Dick's yelling at Roy. He's like, you know, you took to you took an extra couple seconds to stream this instead of taking the shot. It didn't matter in that instance, but yeah. it could someday. Yeah, because even says I'm like, quit flexing for the camera. Yeah. But you liked it? Yeah. I thought it was good. It'll be interesting. Yeah, I do like this. I, it, yeah, like I, th I think it's only like a mini series, so forget how many it is. I think it's only like five or six, so. Yeah, I think it's six. Excited for them to get everything all sorted out and for Batman to be less dark and stormy. <laughs> mm. Mm. But yeah, I mean, speaking of, like I said, I'll, I'll just barely basically mentioned my uh, world's finest number 17 came out this week not a lot of dick but he's him and wonder woman were basically uh interrogating the was it dr ivo yeah yeah is it still that same storyline with the yeah this was the, the this was the, this was the final part yeah 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 okay because they had to defeat the, the new version of a mezo new mezo and yeah that's what he's called new mezo Pretty much, yeah. And you. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yes. And sadly. <laughs> but it's so funny because, like, of course, at the end, everyone's cleared. But, like, Jimmy Olsen's all worried. He's like, he's like, oh, my God, I accused Bruce Wayne and put, you know, in the paper and everything. He's like, he's going to come after me. And, and then Superman's like, no, he's not. Is Batman standing right there? It's like, no, he's not. And even Batman's like, no, no, no. You, you know, you, you, you walk the trail that you thought was right you know it's not like you did it inside of spiders you know you thought you were telling the truth yeah oh jimmy that's so funny he's just like where's Wade's gonna come after me i mean like that is a legit concern though oh yeah he doesn't know bruce wayne is a good billionaire i mean is an okay billionaire Oh yeah, no, because Batman says no. He says you speculated on motive, but nothing you wrote was false, Jimmy. That doesn't necessarily stop billionaires. <laughs> See, yeah, Jimmy. 
Yeah. Jimmy knows what's up. Uh huh. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, there wasn't a ton of dick, but yeah, it, it was like, good, and it, again, it wrapped up that whole thing. So now everyone knows Bruce Wayne's innocent. Love that. Oh, good. Oh, thank right. God. I was worried. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're worried about that poor millionaire. That poor billionaire. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, all right. So where should where should we go to next? Oh, wait, is it the only thing we have left? Nightwing, or is there something else? Well, we have well, we have Tales of the Titans also. Oh yeah. Uh, maybe we should do that one next. Yeah. Yeah. yeah let's do with the, my uh, tears. I don't know. What do you want to do? Yeah. No. Let's do that. Yeah. Tales of the Titans star uh, number one, which was Starfire. Revealed at last the shocking space mission of Prin Princess Coriander. So yeah, this one was mostly uh, Cory in this one. We see all the Titans, including Dick, in the beginning. Uh, then... Hanging out at Titans Tower. Mm -hmm. mm. But yeah, it's funny because the rest of the team goes off on a mission, and then uh, yeah, Cory gets called away for something else. I, what, what did you think about the interaction between uh, Barbara and Corey in this? So I liked that because, yeah, I always thought, yeah, it's interesting that they haven't had them interact much in comics. And we talked about it before when we read that 99 Titan series. I always found it very annoying and out of character that Barbara would be kind of catty with Corey because... I didn't think she would be like that. Exactly. But like she said, there have been signs they have more in common than just a pension for Nightwing. Yeah, they have a lot in common. I mean, it seems Corey is more emotional than Barbara, but they're both ladies that kick butt, and there's no reason they shouldn't be friends. It seems like they have the same taste in music. Exactly. Get in the car. So yes, yeah, so she she actually gets uh, asked for asks uh, to aid some Tamaranians on this planet. They're basically getting uh, terrorized by this giant creature under the surface. So you see, he's like these giant tentacles popping up and like tries to eat Poggert, which is some kind of goat thing. Alien goat, space goat. <laughs> And then the whole thing with her, I mean, again, she gets called by these two sisters. So this brings up uh, issues with her and uh, Blackfire and uh, just the whole thing of people calling her princess. And she's like, basically, it basically rubs her the wrong way at first. Yeah. Which I don't ever remember her being like that before with the princess thing. Yeah, but I was going to say, I have a lot. I mean, again, it's. It's somebody new, so. And again, I don't know if many people would call her princess before, but. Mm. Here's what I'm trying to find. Uh, I guess this was written by Dean and Shannon Hale, so I wonder if they're a couple, married couple, or are they related somehow? Because I'm not familiar. So I mean, I feel like the art I had seen somewhere else, the style, but I can't place it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's yeah, the style looks familiar, but uh, yeah, where's where's that artist name? Yeah, I wasn't, I don't think I was familiar with the artist either. Which I believe is probably, I think, is probably going to get. Uh, changed every issue because it's going to basically do a different character thing every issue. Yeah. But you know, I did see in the solicit and I do like it. It kind of reflects on the cover. It's like an homage to the 80s stuff. So that does look like one of the 80s covers. Yeah. But no, I liked it. Did you like it? 
Yeah, I liked it. I think it's hilarious Wally leaving. He's just putting a jacket on over his Flash outfit. <laughs> like, don't... <laughs> I know. It's like, does it even really matter the speed he Right, moves? it's like, you'll still be pretty conspicuous. <laughs> yeah, no one's gonna see you. Uh, uh, also, though, Dick saying, I better than Moose. I was like, yeah! I didn't know that was a cowboy thing. <laughs> and then just Dawn and Corey just, like, talking in the clouds. <laughs> And at the end, bringing it full circle, she steals Beast Boy's food. Oh, yeah, and they, they have the big food fight. That everyone enjoys, except Raven. <laughs> they hold Earth's Mightiest Heroes, the very much grown up Titans. Yeah, but, I thought it was cute. Yeah, I liked it too. It was cute. I love, I love when they're fighting, uh, was it Queen Bee in there? Yeah. <laughs> Gar, we've been trying try to take her down all day, and Corey just shows up and hit, knocks her out with one punch. It's those Tamaranian powers. Exactly. Boom. And gravity. I mean, gravity. I mean, she basically just like drops from orbit and boom. That's pretty intense. But no, I enjoyed this. Yeah, I wasn't sure. I was it's just. I was like, yeah, it's not going to be Dick because they're focusing on everyone else. But no, I enjoyed this. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Shall we get to the uh, Nightwing issue of uh, Night Night Terror's Nightwing? Say that three times fast. Oh, yeah, that's a mouthful. Yes, let's do it. Uh, so, again, this is weird because this one, just, I guess they basically they just figure, ah, oh, you know what Night Terrors is about because it kind of just jumps into the middle. Dick wakes up at uh, Arkham Asylum. He's like, but yeah, did they explain it more in the Robin one? No, but uh, not really. Uh, but again, each, each one of these issues has the little blur, but like at the top of page yeah. two, or, yeah. But yeah. So I think. So I guess the one, th so the whole thing is a nightmare, right? Yeah, basically everybody's been put to sleep, and yeah, this is that new villain Insomnia is going through their dreams looking for this okay. nightmare crystal. Yeah, because so far the I've got the Robin one, but I haven't physically got it, so I haven't read it yet. But so far, I've just read the Poison Ivy one, and that one. This one, Dix almost felt like there was more than one nightmare in it because he was kind of like going to sleep and then waking up, or and so I was slightly confused. Yeah, again, is he waking up and going to sleep within his nightmare? Because the poison ivy one was all in that world, so she wasn't. It's so. I mean, again, there's because there's different writers writing these things, you know, not you know, the the rules are pretty much aren't the same from book to book because like. That's like in the Green Lantern book, Cal Jordan, like his, it, like it starts with him in a nightmare in it from his childhood, and then it jumps to it like stuff for, in his later adult life and when he's Green Lantern. So yeah, so it doesn't even have to be like one set thing. They, I mean, they can jump around. Okay. Or, and again, since it's okay. a dream, yeah, logic doesn't have to. And again, like it, I think it was in the main book. Yeah, Insomnia was dropping clues that maybe he was from Gotham, and I don't know. if if he was from the asylum or not, because there, there's something gets said in here. I, it, you know, it takes like this. It, these aren't kind of like all these aren't even like my memories. I'm thinking, uh, some of this might be insomnia himself. So, mm -hmm. not sure, but that's from the main issue. You, the main yeah, series. Uh, yeah. It was either the prequel or it was uh, Night Terror number one. But yeah, I see. So yeah, Dick Wick basically thinks he's in Arkham Asylum, has no memory of how he got here. Basically gets uh, showered and uh, all the inmates are like, oh, you know, seem seem like they're all happy with him. Uh, well, I kind of liked how the guards are those sort of Hey guys, that yeah. felt very Twilight Zone to me because there's that one Twilight Zone episode. So I was like, oh, that's interesting, but it also kind of ties in with Professor Pig. I don't know. I thought that was kind of cool. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was like, is there some kind of symbolism there? But yeah. Oh, we've seen this artist before too on the Nightwing book, I think, haven't we? Um, let's see. We have. Uh, where's the credits? Oh, there we go. Uh, Daniela Dean. I'm not. We might have. I'm not sure. Okay, it looks kind of familiar. Yeah. Again, I mean, it's no Bruno Redondo, but it's not that far off of Bruno. You know, it's not like startlingly different Bruno from Bruno Redondo. So, but you no, know, yeah, I know I like the art, and the people keep saying, you know, the dick, oh, have fun with your cellmate. He's like, what? There's no one in here. I also find it interesting how so many of the people are kind of humanoid animals. That's very interesting. Uh -huh. mm. But everyone keeps saying about, oh, don't you remember what you did? Don't you remember what you did? And yeah, the big reveal is uh, after he dances around it for a while. Well, uh, yeah, they reveal that supposedly uh, I'm trying to see how far in they went with it, but uh, that they killed Batman, supposedly. And I also found it interesting that this was a full-length one because uh, some of them, they've been doing backup stories in them. Oh, really? Yeah, with some of these Night Terrors things. So, like, yeah, I was going to say Green Lantern had one, Wonder Woman had one. Uh, yeah, some of them had backup cells. So I was kind of happy that they gave us the full... Uh, because this was a little thicker than like the regular monthly book, so I'm like, I'm glad we got the full issue to go into this. Yeah, it was definitely interesting. Well, and it, like, what are they going to do with Babs, Barbara coming in? I mean, that's interesting. I don't know if that even ties into something else too, because you know the the way she looks with like that metal and stuff like on her face and that. Yeah, they said she's ninety percent metal, so. I mean, I don't, I, I don't think it ties in, but it, it's kind of eerily similar in the Punchline book. In Punchline's dream, she like she's pulling a crime. Barbara shows up as Batgirl, and Punchline kills her. And then Punchline goes to the clock tower to like you know just like steal everything. But then Zombie Barbara shows up and like starts attacking her. And then like towards the end, Bar uh, like all the computers and stuff basically just like merge with her. So. So I, I found that eerily similar that, yeah, there's like two different, there was two different books this week where Barbara basically like gets like infused with metal. So yeah, well, that'd be interesting to see what happens. I mean, unless, week. unless dreams are crossing over because in the Superman book, supposedly, unless they show next issue that there's like still, still part of the dream, but like Supergirl basically punched her way into Superman's dream. So I mean, I guess why not? I mean, do I, what you want. It's a I, just it's, it's just a short event. Go go yeah. make or go home. <laughs> and again, it's meta human stuff, so you never know. Okay, Phil, what was my favorite part? Um oh does it uh doesn't he uh doesn't he say something about doesn't he say something about his dad? Yes, on the last page, his little box. First I killed my father. Now I have yes. the woman I love. I was like, ah yeah. <laughs> Oh, that was the other creepy thing is like, don't two of those guards or somebody pull off their mask and it's supposed to be John and Mary? Yeah, the mouse, the guards that are oh, the yeah. Or the nurses, the doctors, nurses, whatever they are. And he's like, I've had dreams like this before, but never so vivid and stuff. And... Mm. Medical professionals. <laughs> I, actually, I should lose that term uh, loosely. <laughs> Exactly. Mm. And then the creepy scarecrow, uh, Jonathan Crane in this, basically just. Yeah. All hung up. But yeah, no, I, I did like the art in this and, uh, so yeah, did you like it? Because again, yeah, we got different artists, we got different writers. Because it's Becky Cloonan and Michael Conrad. So yeah, 
I mean, I did think it was kind of jumping around a lot because uh, all kinds of different things were happening in Arkham, but because again, too, it's as again, it's a it's a dream, so I guess they can jump however they want. And two, we only got two issues, so it's like we got to get to the. Yeah. So I wonder next month if we just see everyone can like start getting out of their dreams and stuff. Or I mean, I guess they only have one month to do it. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. But I wonder if it's just gonna be a thing where it's like, oh, continued in uh, next issue of Night Terrors, and I would like to see some resolution in people's own books. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> So of the Night Terrors that you have read, sounds like you've read a lot, which ones do you think have been the best? I mean, it may sound like I'm playing favorites, but I did like this Nightwing one. Um, the Green Lantern one last week was good, but that's also because Jeremy Adams, who's writing the regular monthly book, wrote it. So he he kind of subtly like worked it into... Uh, into the regular book because at the end of issue oh, two, okay. at, the, at the end of issue the regular issue two of Green Lantern how Jordan's on a plane and that's where he picks up uh, Jeremy Adams picks it up oh. and they tears number one and he like shoots him right into the dream from there so oh that's so cool yeah and, and he kind of dr kind of drops like hints of stuff that uh for stuff that's going on in the book right now so yeah it was kind of oh, nice okay. that the regular writer actually wrote that although there were a few yeah. like like that because um. Mark Wade wrote the uh, new Shazam one, which uh, he's writing the Shazam book right now. And uh, yeah, Joshua Williamson wrote the Superman one. I think he's I think he's writing the regular Superman book right now. So yeah, there were there were a few instances of the regular writer writing the uh, Night Terrors issues, which well, I, mean, I thought the Poison Ivy one was cool because yeah. I like that sort of suburban nightmare genre. So yeah. and I think that's a very good fit for Poison Ivy. So that was. That was good. And again, I mean, with a, sometimes with some of these events, it, it almost seems like too gimmicky or just like a cash grab or something. I mean, I haven't had any real problem with any of these uh, and all the ones I've I pretty much read them all, except for some reason. I just I don't, I don't want to pick up Black Adam, but everything else I pretty much picked up. Uh, but no, I mean, yeah, everything I've read anything so far. I was like, this is a stinker, but no. It just feels like they should have done it over Halloween. That's what I was thinking right before we jumped <laughs> on. I'm like, why don't we do like September, October or October, November? Yeah. For some reason, it seems like they DC likes to do this like summer thing every so often. Well, I mean, I suppose thematically, I get that, you know, it's Halloween-y. But they're probably thinking, it kind of like with the TV shows. People are traveling in the summer, just not doing their normal stuff. So maybe they're thinking, well, well, because for most of these, you could miss these issues and it's not as though you, oh no, what's happening? I don't understand. Yeah. Cause I did see that online too. People were saying, yeah, I could just wait till September or pick up the next issue or whatever. Yeah. It might be. I wonder if that's a way for them to give the regular writers a summer vacation if they want it. Yeah, could be. Uh, all right, so it doesn't even have to be the Night Terrors one. So did you? which one did you like the best? Did you like the World's Finest one better? Did you like the uh, Starfire one? Did you like the Night Terrors one better? Which one, Out of those three, which one was your favorite? Probably the world's finest one. Oh, okay. I see that. I could see that. I mean, I like that Dick called Bruce's dad, but that was only on the last page. Exactly. After he killed him, supposedly, yeah. Diggity dang. What was, what was your favorite? Um, The world's, I don't know, the world, that world's finest was pretty good. Uh, I might have to give it to Night Terror's Nightwing number one. I guess I would say art. I liked the Nightwing better because yeah. I liked it. I didn't think Dick had a weird face. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. Like I said, it wasn't. It, it, it wasn't so different from the monthly book. Again, it was a different artist, but it wasn't so so different. 
but yeah, I mean, again, I've been enjoying Night Terrors more than I thought I was going to. I thought it was just going to be as just like, ah, oh, here, here's a new event, give us money. But yeah, but yeah, it's kind of a it's kind of a good idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't wait for the conclusion to that. So, but the Night Terrors book is four parts. So, is it coming out twice a month? Mm. Is it like early and late in the month? It must be because, yeah, because it has to be. Yeah, because like you said, it's only two months. Uh, when I'm searching when the, n- number two is coming out. Uh, yeah, next week number two comes out. So, yeah, must be. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, and of course, and, of, uh, and again, he's been fighting uh, insomnia almost this whole time. But of course, who's on, who's on the cover? Uh, Batman. My favorite character. And Dead Man. Of course. Of course. Oh, hold on. I got to, oh, jeez. One of the variants for uh, Night Terrors number two is a, uh, I guess it's an homage to Death in the Family. It says Night Terrors. Is he holding Robin or is he holding? He's holding a child. Uh, oh, wait, let me see. It's a child in a suit, so. A Robin suit or like a suit suit? No, like a suit, like a suit and tie suit. Oh, hmm, okay. So, unless they explain this in the issue, but. Maybe it's like Bruce holding himself or something. It could be, because like I said, in one of the dreams, yeah, like Insomnia is fighting him, but he's like doing his childhood memories. So you see like a kid, Bruce Wayne, like fighting him. Ooh, neon ink uh, variant. <laughs> neon? What is this? The nineties? I don't know. <laughs> More like seventies. All right. All right. Anything else, Kristen? I think that's it. All right. And again, if you missed our announcement last week, yes, uh, yes, we're gonna be going. Uh, going down to two shows a month for uh, Nightwing News. So uh, next episode, by the time you hear us next time, uh, yeah, we'll be talking uh, Night Night t- Nightwing Night Terrors number two and uh, some of the stuff next month. Uh, so yes, we'll be going to one new, one episode of new stuff and one uh, classic stuff every month. But so in the next two weeks, you will hear the first two episodes of Electric Mullet. We're going to be talking some in order the 80, late 80s uh, and uh, all the 90s Superman stuff. So, Starting with John Burns' Man of Steel. And we all know who uh, who shows up in issue three of Man of Steel, right, kids? Batman. My favorite character. Their, their, their first post-crisis of, uh, meeting. Of course. Yes. All right, so... All right, so yeah, send us your thoughts on all the Night Terror stuff, uh, especially the Titans and uh, Nightwing stuff, or uh, the Tales of the Titans. Email us all your thoughts, capesandlunatics at gmail.com, or call the voicemail, 614-382-2737, that's 614-38-CAPES. And remember, you can find all things Capes and Lunatics, uh, episodes, social media, merchandise, the Patreon, please subscribe, uh, Find it all at tubespace.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network. That's tubespace.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network. All right. So keep back uh, since Kristen won't be podcasting as much. Keep her busy fi- uh, filling orders. Go out and buy Dick Grays and Boy Wonder on Amazon right now. Subliminal messaging. Kids, if you don't know what it looks like, go on YouTube. There, it's right up right there on the screen. So, why does it? Oh, what says is your name? Why does it say professor? That was that more official. Uh, I don't know. We don't really do that. That's weird. Oh, uh, okay. Mm. Gotta push some units. Come on. <laughs> but, yes, kids, no, it's a good book. Uh, Especially uh, if you're a fan of uh, any variation of Dick Grayson, Nightwing, yes, pick up this book. And I guarantee you, you will discover things that you did not know about the character. I 
can't roll and pee. All right. All order, Phil. All right now. All right, kids. I know. We'll be back in a few weeks. Don't have any bad dreams. We'll be back. <laughs> I know. I know. You have to wait a few weeks. There's terror in your hearts. I know. All right, kids. We'll be back in a few weeks to chase those pig men, pig men away. That's a good issue. He's going to break out of that cell and do all kinds of stuff. Batman probably showed him how to escape from a dream. All right, kids. Until we meet again, join us same wing time. Same wing channel. Hey, Nightwing news. Next week, all Superman. <laughs> <laughs>